Hi students, welcome to session 2 of Forest, our lifeline. So students, in today's session, we will study about interdependence of plants and animals. Right? Let us find out how all the living organisms are dependent on each other in a forest. So welcome to this interesting session of Forest. Yes students, interdependence of plants and animals. Students, the variety of plants and animals found in the forests attract a lot of people to forests. Because forests are a good place to go for hiking, camping, uh, sorry, camping, fishing and various other outdoor activities. They serve as major recreation and holiday destination since temperatures in forests are lower than normal and the air is very pure over there. So basically living organisms are all interconnected and they form a biotic community or we can say a biota. What do we call biotic community or biota? Now students we know very well that forests help to preserve the diverse life forms or living organisms around the world. Right? So let us see how this happens. Yes, all animals depend on plants for food directly or indirectly. For example, a rat eats grains and plants. A snake eats a rat which, in, which is in turn eaten by an ant an eagle right so it is like a chain that exists in nature and such a chain is called food chain right so we will see in the figure this is the beautiful picture of a typical food chain what it is called as yes a typical food chain right so here you can see beautiful diagram beautiful cycle can you think of these food chains what is it actually happening yes here you can see that there is sun which is the major source of heat and light which is the major provider of heat and light right and here you can see the cross now here we can assume we can see that photosynthesis occurs with the help of sunlight right so grass is the producer because it manufactures the food by its own with the help of water sunlight that is warmth from the sun and other nutrients which are present in the soil so grass is actually manufacturing its food, it is producing its food and that is why it is termed as producer. After that comes the primary consumer. Consumer means who consumes this food or this grass. So here is an example that is grasshopper. Grasshopper is dependent on grass. It eats grass and that is why it is termed as primary consumer because it is the first one to consume so it is the primary consumer secondly this grasshopper is eaten by a snake and that is why it is termed as secondary consumer because snake consumes grasshopper right then comes the tertiary consumer means snake is now consumed by hawk or an eagle so it is the tertiary consumer and finally when there is death of these animals the flesh is eaten by some bacteria and fungi because they decompose sorry this is this because they decompose these dead bodies of plants and animals and that is why they are termed as decomposer right and again the cycle will go on from the producer to the decomposer right so remember that green plants are called the producers as they can produce their own food 
animals are called consumers since they cannot produce their own food and that is why they depend on plants and other animals for food and then when animals die their bodies break down with the help of decomposers such as fungi and bacteria too right and they become a part of the soil by this what happens let's see yes as i said before that when animals die their bodies break down with the help of decomposers such as bacteria and fungi and then they become a part of the soil so this basically makes the soil fertile helping the growth of helping in the growth of plants and then these plants again become food sources for the animals and thus the food chain goes on and on so basically food chains are simple representations of energy flow in nature and they exist everywhere be it in the pond or the ocean the grassland the mountain or desert anything so remember that first comes the sun then comes the producer after that comes the primary consumer then comes the secondary consumer i'm continuing over here secondary consumer then comes the tertiary consumer and lastly decomposers such as bacteria and fungi right so students can you think of more food chains that exist in nature well there are other food chains too yes students here which you see is actually the diagrammatic representation of a typical food web right it's not as simple as a chain and that is why it is termed as a typical food web now there are several food chains that exist in nature and they are interconnected to each other right for example a rat and a hen they both eat grains and both of them can be eaten by a cat a cat can be eaten by a bigger animal such as wolf but a wolf can also eat a hen and a rat directly so there also exists a more complex representation of energy flow in nature and we call such a representation as food web as it appears like a web that a spider spins right so are we the human beings a part of the food web yes definitely we human beings are also the part of food web so here you can see just a few examples of interdependence of plants and animals in the forest and in nature right here you can see that there is rotting log which is actually eaten by bracket fungus then there are dead leaves and many species of dead leaves they are eaten by bacteria archaea and many species even dead animals are eaten by bacteria archaea and many species rotting log can uh, rot sorry lo rotting log can be also eaten by bacteria then puff ball or bacteria they are eaten by millipede or earthworm then millipede or earthworm they can be eaten by robin or alligator lizard too like pill pillbugs insect larva or cricket they can be eaten by alligator or lizard alligator lizard or robin too a robin and alligator lizard can be eaten by fox and robin can also be eaten by hawk too but hawk cannot eat alligator lizard right so in this way and we humans can consume such animals like goat or cow or the beef of the cow or many other animals like fish etc right so direction of energy flow here is from lower to 
higher tropic level right so remember this that energy flows from low to higher lower to higher tropic level right so students remember that trees in forest they are sources for many such animals and many such animals are the food for human beings so in this way the thing works the cycle works now here we can see few examples of interdependence of plants and forests in the nature and they are oh sorry interdependence of plants and animals in the forest or in the nature they are trees and forests provide shelter to animals such as chimpanzees monkeys gorillas snakes chipmunks birds and squirrels so here you can see the beautiful picture of a squirrel or a chipmunk right so there are chipmunks there are squirrels for them trees in the forest provide shelter trees also absorb the harmful effects of natural elements sorry elements such as wind sunlight and rainfall thus protecting animals and giving them shelter then here you can see one more beautiful picture of a butterfly so what do you think what explains the figure yes there are several insects and birds which become agents that bring about pollination of flowers thereby assisting in fruit formation so butterflies bees wasps and hummingbirds they are the pollinators right so butterfly is also one of the pollinator which helps in the pollination right then there are seeds of several plants that depend on animals for dispersal which is important for the survival of many varieties of plants there are some seeds like there are some seeds which are also called the seed pods seed pods with hooks so there are some seeds which stick to the fur of animals and get transported to far off places like this here you can see this is the seed pod with hooks right and here you can see that it sticks to the animals fur or animal skin and then it is transported to far off places then there are other animals too such as monkeys chimpanzees and birds that eat fruits along with the seeds and these animals they keep moving from one place to another so what happens that the seeds of the fruits that they eat come out with the excreta and then they get scattered to different or distant places these animals help in dispersal of seeds too so how interesting it is right there are seeds of cockleburr too which stick to the animal's fur and then when they move around here and there they are transported to far off or distant places right so there are many other benefits that we get from forests as forests play a vital role in releasing huge amounts of oxygen in, into air too so it is also helpful in purifying air right so students forests play a vital role in releasing huge amounts of oxygen into air too right so let us see that how forests are helpful in purifying air yes students forests are rich in plants and animals sorry not in with forests are rich with plants and animals all plants and animals take in air to survive right so from where do they get air yes green plants take in carbon dioxide of the air to manufacture their own food that is by the process of photosynthesis and then they release oxygen as a by product right so what happens that green plants 
they take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen thereby animals use this oxygen which is released by green plants so in this way the environment is balanced but environment is balanced only when green plants are available in the forests if there is deforestation then there will be no trees like no trees means there will be less amount of trees available and the animals would be in huge amount right so that will not be balanced for this green plants have to be there in forests that is why we should use the trees which are in forest very judiciously or we should plant more trees so students forests also serve as a sink for carbon dioxide as a sink for carbon dioxide means forests also serve as a sink for carbon dioxide which is given out by plants and animals during respiration so as a sink means they will for in forest trees will take in carbon dioxide right and they will give out oxygen which is used by plants and animals and animals and plants thereby they will exhale carbon dioxide which will be useful for the green plants so in this way forests serve as sink for carbon dioxide given out by animals and plants during respiration and also carbon dioxide which is produced by burning of coal at petroleum which is given out as a result of volcanoes and other natural disasters so if there will be more number of plants so they will be used to they will be used to take in carbon dioxide this large amount of carbon dioxide and thereby they will release oxygen gas so thus forests help to maintain the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide of the air and that is why forests especially the rain forests are referred to as lungs of the earth lungs of the planet earth right so this was all about the forests that help in purifying air now i would like to share one case study with you case study which is about developing urban green belts now students urban green belts they are considered urban green belts they are basically considered as the lungs of the cities why because they act as a sink for some of the harmful gases released by vehicles and industries operating in the city area so these belts prevent soil erosion and they improve the micro climate now how do they help which are considered which forests are considered as the lungs of the cities let us see yes here you can see the name of delhi ridge right so the delhi ridge forests are considered the lungs of the capital the main areas being the central or the new ridge and the northern or the old delhi right now what happens here that earlier there were only keeka popularly called as acacia so there were only acacia trees growing sparsely among the hard rocks but according to the municipal records after 1857 the british ordered the planting of thousands of neem and babool trees by the time india attained independence this area was covered with diverse vegetation of plants and trees and however the ridge is under severe threat as it is being gradually destroyed over the years mainly due to the increasing human activities so most of the animals of this area has vanished totally so students most of the animals of this area have vanished and yet even today it is a bird watchers paradise because there are at least 200 species of birds that have been sighted in the delhi ridge 
and there are many other organizations working for the preservation of this green belt called the delhi ridge and are trying to restore it to its past glory so students these organizations involve citizens to participate in tree planting programs greening of colonies stop felling of trees they discourage the use of plastic bags and many other things right so in this case in this way the delhi ridge they are there are many organizations they are developing urban green bells which is a very good initiative for the preservation or the preservance of the environment and maintaining balance in the environment right so students that was all about today's session we are through with session 1 we will now meet in session 2 and we will learn more about forests so don't miss this session and be there thank you and have a nice time keep learning keep enjoying